What's up, everybody? This is Kaz Dan is on with Crash Productions, and today we actually have a guest with us here with uh, Ian Weeks of Tukasoft, one of the developers for uh, the Atari VCS. Ian, can you tell us about yourself for, uh, real quick? Yes, hi there. Um, I've been developing uh, software generally for many, many, many years. Um, Games-wise, probably the last 10 years or so, I've been messing around, trying to come up with various interesting little games for various platforms and things like that. And I stumbled across the, the VCS a few years ago on the Indiegogo, and I thought it'd be a great platform to develop games for. So uh, here we are today. Fantastic. Now, I do want to go ahead and say that um, <clears throat> you've had a few games developed uh, for Android before in the past, and currently you have a game on the Atari VCS known as uh, Pedra. Crystal, uh, is it Crystal Caves? Crystal right? Caves, yeah, yeah, Pedra Crystal Caves. Caves. But that is actually a sequel to an original game that you released sometime close to 2014, 2015 for Android, correct? That's right. Yeah, the the original Pedra. Um, the for for many for, for many years for for a long time it was called Brick Painter, not Pedra, and it didn't seem to have that kind of snappy feel to it. So um, uh, my wife would love this. She's Brazilian, and uh, Pedra is actually a Portuguese word for rock or stone or something like that. So and as you're moving your block around the uh, the grid, um, hence the name. And that started off as a uh, really just as a development um, project to see if I could develop anything um, game wise using a technology called XNA, which is a really old Microsoft development framework. And um, that was for for Windows, really. Originally, I got it working on Windows. It was a very basic concept, and I thought this would make a really nice little mobile phone game. So I kind of then learned how to do stuff on Android and uh, developed it for that and released it. And um, yeah, a few people downloaded it. They seem to enjoy it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's still out there somewhere, I think. So uh, yeah. as a matter of fact, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> but uh, I did play the original and I do want to say that comparing the original to the remake that is now featured on the Atari VCS. And I do believe and correct me if I'm wrong on this. That was a timed exclusive for the VCS, was it not? It was for the first six months or so. Yeah, it's uh, it recently it got released on Steam as well. Right. Um, so I have played both versions of Pedra and obviously Crystal Caves has more to it. And the control dynamic is is definitely different than an Android phone. Uh, but there's also a variety of other games that you've also released before in the past. And of course, we'll get into all that here in a minute. Um, one of the biggest questions that I wanted to ask you um, is what is the most you know memorable game that you've developed for thus far? Um, well, Pedro Crystal Caves has a lot of the ideas um, that I uh, that I had in it. Um, you know, when you're doing a lot of these things, you try and cram as much in as possible. Um, and then that leads to more ideas. You think, oh, great, I've done that. But what if we could do this as well? Mm -hmm. And then add this bit, add that bit. And before you know it, you've got so many more features um, in the game than what you originally started out with. And I think Pedra has that for me because, um, as you said, it, it's kind of a sequel to the original game, which was a very simplistic sort of two-dimensional plane working around on it. Right. The, the second one, I wanted to go in, in a, an additional dimension. So you can go up and down. It, it's on different levels. And then there's the elements of the power-ups and the meanies that you have to battle with, all of these. So the, these all kind of developed as, as I went along and ideas from friends and family. Um, what if you just did this? What if you did that? So in, in terms of that, it's got a lot of, a lot of, it's almost like there's nothing else I could really think to put in it. So in that sense, it's it's very memorable. Um, and I know we're kind of jumping ahead of here a little bit, but maybe uh, the, uh, something that is is just as memorable, if, if not more so, is Guardian Wars, um, because it was a, a very uh, complex mental exercise for me to actually develop that. Um, and we'll probably come to that in a minute. But uh, yeah, so that one, that one was was also very memorable in that sense. Um, but other ones, you know, they a lot of these games that I've developed are are exercises in trying to figure out how a particular mechanic works in a game. Um, so uh, uh, the the 3D rolling around a grid aspect of, of Pedra was something. How how do you do that? You know, um, it, it was very very easy with the remake in Unity because it's all 3D objects and you're just moving things around. But the original Pedra was nothing like that. That's all sprite sheets and, and just images. You can't imagine it because it, it's got this semi 3D flavor to it or two and a half D maybe, but there's no 3D stuff going on in there whatsoever. So that was a, it was a very, very interesting programming exercise, I guess, in that sense. 
if I uh, if I may interject for just a second here, um, <clears throat> and I do apologize, I'm coming down from a sinus infection, um, so I'm trying to clear all that out. <clears throat> so if I do that often, it's no disrespect, of course. So if I may interject for just a second here, um, and this is coming from somebody who doesn't properly understand uh, coding and game development, but has always been generally curious about it. Um, your games, for lack of better definition, have always had to have, have always seemed to be somewhat simplistic in nature you have a general aesthetic for how you how you make your games and i think that's really what makes a lot of your stuff you know stand out compared to other products on say steam android vcs and so on um and i realize that we live in a world where like graphics are like the height of most games but most people who go and try to play games on the vcs aren't really there for the graphics they're there for the retro experience and they're there for the you know just the experience in general the gameplay yeah. Yeah. all right go ahead i uh, say so the gameplay you know which is which is, I think, personally more interesting than just fancy, flashy graphics. Exactly, and that's the point I'm getting at. You, you, you don't just try to make your games pop. From my observation, you, you focus more on the mechanics for your games. And um, you mentioned earlier uh, Guardian Wars, and I'm very excited uh, to talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, but you get some inspiration from some of the games of, of old, from like Atari ST. Is that correct? Yeah, um, growing up in the sort of mid late eighties and the 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 landscape of computer gaming at that point, mm. which was the Atari ST, the Amiga, before that the Commodore sixty four, the Big Twenty, mm. things like this, um, which was my very first computer, by the way, the Big Twenty. Um, those games, of course, it was extremely simplistic graphics wise mm. um, on the original eight bits, but the games were really really fun and addictive to play, mainly because of, of the gameplay. Um, you couldn't have realistic graphics. Mm -hmm. So they relied on a very interesting game to play. And that has just really developed uh, through the years uh, for, for the games that I wanted to develop. And again, just being a single solo developer, I don't have teams of graphic designers or, or anything else. It's just me. So I'm limited to my own abilities in that sense. So you don't want to cut off more than you can chew um, in that sense and, and trying to create something you can't compete with these AAA titles, you know, like a Call of Duty or Halo or whatever it is. Mm. Um, you just simply can't do it. So I think for me personally, to, to actually get a game out there, to complete it, which is uh, a very difficult thing to do in the first place, um, because there's so many guys out there that try, try game development and they have a great idea, they start doing it, and then they hit a few roadblocks and then they just give up. And then the game never sees the light of day, which is a shame, you know? So uh, if you can stick with it and actually produce a game for me that that's that's brilliant um but do something that you're capable of doing and for me it's the gameplay element try and make it fun to play because even if it is very simplistic basic graphics it doesn't matter if the game is fun to play it doesn't really matter for, for me but maybe that's because that's where i've come from in the past and what i grew up with um the newer generation i don't know you'd have to speak to some younger kids if they if if, if important graphic uh, flashy graphics are the most important thing i don't know but um, eventually, I think that kind of thing fades, and what you remember is something that was really, really good, and you had a good time playing it, you know? So that's that's really where most of my games come from, is that it should be fun to play initially. And then if I can make it as fancy, flashy as possible, graphics-wise, with my limited abilities, then great. You know? I, I like the way that you put that, to be honest with you, and it raises another question. Um, and um, what would you say to, to some of the independent developers right now who may be discouraged with their video games and maybe are thinking maybe this isn't good enough to put out or whatever what would you say to them um from your experience that is uh as far as releasing a game considering that there's so much competition in this crazy video game world that we live in today well that's it and that's the problem um and one of the reasons why i was attracted to the the vcs in the first place mm -hmm. is that there there isn't thousands upon thousands of games available for it which some people think is a bad thing but also it can be a good thing in the sense that if you're a developer and you release something, it's gonna get seen. People are gonna see it. People are gonna wanna download it and pay for it and, and play it. Um, if you try and release something on the, uh, the Play Store or the, uh, the iOS Store um, or in Steam, there's thousands of things that are, that are released daily and your game will simply just get lost in an ocean. Right. And uh, so if your if your um, desire is to release a game and you clearly, you know, you want people to play it and, and see it. Otherwise, what's the point? Um, then something like the, the VCS is a perfect platform because you've got uh, hardcore gamers of, of yesteryear 
as well as newer 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 guys who are coming into to gaming so i think which i think they appreciate the the quality experience better so if you're a developer and you're hitting roadblocks or you're not quite sure you don't think it's quite good enough um release it let the community decide they will love it or they will hate it but you will get valuable feedback from these people and which will only just go into making your next game better so i would say don't just stop don't release it no get it to the point where it's playable it's enjoyable send it out there um even make it for free just to get some feedback i don't know but um let people play it and uh, certainly the vcf community seems very vocal uh, on the discord servers and they will let you know how they feel about something um so yeah yeah release 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 uh, the, the the vcs could certainly do with a few more titles um everybody's mm -hmm. crying out for stuff um but generally uh, purely from a, a satisfaction point of view it's good to get something finished and released and then you can move on to the next thing you know even I, uh, if it's not great all right let it out. <laughs> i apologize um so i i'm I, I like to consider myself kind of like one of the resident young heads uh of the vcs group because there's a lot of uh, Atari veterans who are in that group, as well as uh, people who are investing in the Atari VCS, not just for that nostalgic feel, but because it kind of combines modern gaming with retro gaming. Uh, I was born in 91, so like I grew up on Nintendo, and it wouldn't be until I hit my teenage years that I realized that Sega was superior. Yes, I will down. <laughs> but still, um, for me, the Atari VCS, uh, as I've said before in previous videos, has been a bit of a journey for me. It's exposed me to games that I would never otherwise have ever heard of, uh, if anything. And I think that's important because the VCS is uh, currently, and, and I say this loosely, is an underutilized development tool that indie develop developers could really delve into and take advantage of. Um, mm -hmm. With that in mind, uh, seeing as you actually have a video game that is on the VCS store right now, which of course is Pedro, you know, Crystal Caves, um, I wanted to ask you, how has reception for that game been for you thus far? Uh, mostly positive, yeah. Um, everybody that's uh, played it um, seems to enjoy it. There's been a few people who um, have not. Uh, they've, they've found it too difficult or they're just not into puzzle games or, or whatever. And that's absolutely fine. If it's not your bag, it's not your bag, you know, and you move on to the next thing. But um, there was a great quote that somebody wrote on the Discord server that um, something about uh, their brain was melting out through their ears when they were playing it, um, which I guess it was a little bit too difficult for them. I don't know. But um, uh, the, the, the difficulty level is, is always is hard to 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 judge um because obviously when you're developing these things you know you, you play in in and out all the time um so it becomes quite easy for you but for for, for people uh, uh other people they they find it quite difficult but generally it, it's been positive and um the uh recently i asked the community for some feedback um uh, about it and they gave some quite good information and um, I've been working on an update uh, to, to Pedra. Uh, so that will be coming out very shortly um, with various updates to the way the game plays and, and things like this. Nothing massively visual uh, difference, uh, things like this, but just various things will, will maybe hopefully make it a little bit better, a little bit easier to play um, in, in some ways. So yeah, yeah, the, the, the community has been, has been good uh, to me in that sense. So uh, I thank them. And continuous feedback is great because it only makes the next game I work on better in that sense, you know? If I may, um, if I may make a suggestion, and this is just a, my opinion on the game. Um, so <clears throat> I actually very much like Crystal Caves. I still haven't beaten it yet. It is definitely a difficult game, especially for somebody who's not very familiar with these kinds of, you know, um, is that the right word? I was going to say rudimentary puzzles, but I don't think that's the right word. But I'm not familiar with these kind of puzzle games. So, like, to be honest with you, um, Crystal or, or Pedra in general has been my exposure to that. And one of the things is that I noticed that you kind of have, let's say, for example, this is like a box, right? So you kind of have the gameplay, like like, like the mat slanted. Yeah, so isometric kind of, view, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. And um, so it kind of confuses the control again. And I apologize, this is an Ouya controller. But basically, I found myself having to play like this to kind of like to, to make it easier for me and i'm wondering yeah. uh has anybody said anything at all about the d-pad being a concern at all um not not especially they a lot of people have said that they had to sort of tilt the, the the controller so they can actually do it like this um one of the updates that i'm work, that I'm working on is a sort of a diagonal uh yeah i just, uh, yeah, I just unmuted myself sorry um cut that move on 
uh, <laughs> one of the one of the updates I've been working on is sort of a diagonal kind of control method instead of just a standard up down left right. Okay. So which seems to work fine, um, and maybe that that will help help people to to play it a little easier. I don't know, but you're absolutely right. Uh, but the control methods for these things can be a little tricky. Um, but then again, like we said before, in the 80s, there was a lot of isometric games. And maybe Long my brain is... is to mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Crystal Castles, uh, you know, Cubert, um, Zaxxon, things like this. Spin Dizzy. Um, these were all games that I kind of were influenced by, and certainly for this one. Um, and uh, made my brain is a bit more wired into seeing how isometric works. And for me, it was very natural. But for, for other people, it was a bit, little bit tricky. But uh, hopefully we can address that. All right, so we're we're going to try to move on so that way we don't run out of too much time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to question number four. Uh, I do want to say, again, thank you for allowing me to interview you, by the way. No, no, this is weirdly, well, not weirdly, this is the first one I've ever done in, in this sense. Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah, on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I've done lots of other stuff, but for video games, this is this is the first thing. So I, so. And... I might keep this in here, depending on what you say and whether you want it to stay or not. But I, I just want to say that your website, you know, you dedicate it to pretty much being a developer for the VCS, which, of course, is one of the questions that we're about to get into here in a second. But um, uh, I, I think it's a very bold statement. Um, I have another friend who uh, on his website has the Atari VCS logo, but hasn't developed any games yet, but he's getting ready to. Um, Ed, I think the despite the negative clashback that comes from how the VCS started, and how a lot of people tend to compare the past to how it is now, you know, it, it's, it's a bold statement because there are people who are now coming forward who are proudly saying, I want to put these games on the VCS. And of course, I'm all for it. And I'm sure, you know, thousands of others who are playing it right now are for it as well. Um, but uh, she lost my question. <laughs> I lost my question. The point is, well, it, it, I was, yeah, it, it's, it's a, uh, hmm. again, for, for indie developers. Um, it, it's a great platform because you're not going to get lost in an ocean of, of releases and, and other things. If you're developing for Xbox or PlayStation or even the Switch, um, there's there's so many guys bigger than you that have got much more marketing money and everything else that you release a game uh, on those platforms. It, uh, as an indie developer, you're not going to be seen. Right. So in, in that sense, it's not that it's a waste of doing it, um, but you know you write games for other people to play. And if they're not getting played, then what's the point? So the VCS, I think, uh, for me, um, is a great platform for that. Because whether people like your style of game or not, at least people are going to see it. Maybe they'll try it. Maybe they don't like it, but their brother does or their wife does or their friends do. And then they get into it, you know. So uh, at least there's going to be some recognition for what you've done, which at the end of the day, you know, you've got to pay the bills. You've got to yes. keep getting the motivation to get to, to do the next thing. Because that's what, you know, a platform is going to live or die based on its content. So um, if more people are developing things for the VCS, then it's just going to continue, which is, I think, what we all want, really. That's, that's a perfect response, by the way. And so that actually does lead into the next question. But the next question is uh, on your website, uh, Tukasoft. You explicitly advertise that you develop games for the Atari VCS. And with the VCS lacking many exclusives uh, or really any... Um... No, we'll just keep it at that. With it lacking many exclusives... Uh, do you plan on making any exclusive content for the console side of the Atari VCS in the future, or is this going to be a business that advocates for the VCS, but also is cross-platform? Well, as I mentioned sort of earlier towards the beginning, um, Pedro was released on Steam recently, about a month, six weeks ago. Right. Um, and like I was just saying, you know, there's thousands of releases a day and, uh, you know, it gets lost. Um, so the response to the Steam platform has been very, very minimal in, in that sense. Um, I thought I'd give it a go and just to see, you know, what other people thought. And it's very hard for to get any visibility. So um, as an indie developer, uh, which in, in many ways I'm doing this in my spare time because I have a full time day job right. as, a, as a software engineer in the corporate world. Um, so I'm, I'm doing it's this funny. in my spare yeah, well, that, that's what pay the, pays the bills, really. Uh, this is more of a, if this could pay the bills, then I would do this 100% of the time, doing the game development. At the moment, it doesn't. Uh, if, it, if it morphed into paying the bills in the future, then yes, I would do that, absolutely. Um, so for now, uh, I'm more than happy uh, to develop exclusive content for the VCS only. Um, and moving forward, I think, 
based on experiences I've had with other platforms. Um, I think really to get the best bang for your buck, uh, I would only release stuff on the VCS moving forward. So my next games, I think, will only be on the VCS. Awesome. So the VCS may quite honestly be getting their first exclusive, which is amazing. I know people have been uh, begging for that, uh, so to speak. <clears throat> and I do want to mention that uh, we are reaching our time limit cap here on the Zoom call, so we'll probably have to jump into another one. So I'm going to make this video a two-parter. Um, so let me go ahead and ask my next question here, uh, and then we'll go ahead and end the video. Um, what new games can you announce coming to the Atari VCS? Okay. Uh, my next game is called Cubix. I, I love these weird little names for these things. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be sort of snappy. People remember, you know, if it's called like John walked down the street and got a pint of milk kind of game name, then you know, so Pedra or, or Cubix or something. So yes, it's called Cubix, which is I another. Would, I would definitely play a game called John walks down the street and get a pint of milk. I would definitely play it. Just because of the name. Just because of the name. <laughs> Lots of things could happen on that street, you know. Lots of things could happen. Anyway, platform. Um, right, let's see. <laughs> uh yes this is going to be less of a puzzle game more of a more of an arcade kind of game it's going to be a, a single player or local two player again um it, it it's it's I, I don't want to give too much away that there, there will be i think there's already been a few screenshots on the discord server i will be putting um uh, a channel up on the dev showcase there uh shortly um where people will be able to see a few screenshots and some video of it as well so that's that is uh, uh i mean i've got several games in development at the same time this is the one that is the most advanced um i'm hoping in the next couple of months or so um it'll be reaching sort of uh, uh, releasable state um but that depends on many factors of course we've got christmas new year coming up so you know that that will kind of delay things a little bit uh but yeah so hopefully the next few months early next year uh that should be released um and then I've got a couple more that are in the sort of uh, discovery phase of really what's the game about um, that I'm also working on. So and they're completely different from from Pedro. Uh, so I, I try not to repeat myself too much in that sense. But yeah, there, there's more coming down the road. That's exciting, first off. And I, I don't want to have to cut this short, but I'm unfortunately going to have to because that clock is ticking above me. But I do want to say thank you for coming out and allowing me to do this interview with you. I wanted to say that uh, I'm looking very, I'm looking forward to playing new games from Tukasoft uh, as a fan of Fedra myself and being able to spell <laughs> being able to support the independent developer is one of the things that I like to pride myself on, which is why I love to VCS so much. So best believe when one of your new games comes out, I will be one of the first people to purchase it. Um, thank you. With that being said, uh, guys, my name is Kaz Danazan. Thank you for watching. We are going to do a part two for this interview. Uh, so stay tuned.